Learning by Repeating, podcast number six, Robert Fortune and Lucy Swindle. This is a personal English podcast recorded in April 2021, voiceover by Maria Cristina Natalia Bertoli. One of the earliest and most consequential cases of corporate espionage and the history changing swindles ever occurred in 1848 and featured as his protagonist, well, a botanist. His name was Robert Fortune and, albeit Scottish by birth, he had spent several years in China, where he had been sent by the Horticultural Society of London to collect and catalogue plants from southern China. Now, the interest the British had in Chinese plants back then was more economic than purely scientific. Tea had been introduced to Great Britain a couple of centuries earlier by Portuguese-born queen Catherine of Braganza, and since then, its popularity had been increasing by the day. China had always had the monopoly on tea trade, as the tea plant is native from southern China, susceptible to climatic changes, and also the processing methods of its leaves was a know-how exclusive to Chinese manufacturers, and a secret they would jealously guard. Now, the British would exchange tea for silver, as China, which was at the cutting edge of crafts in those days, was the unparalleled supplier of luxury goods worldwide, with its porcelain, silk, paper and tea, and did not seek or need anything from barbaric Europe. In the early 1800s, though, the British demand for tea was such that the outflow of silver to China undermined the stability of British economy. The British badly needed to sell silver and find something else to barter tea for. So they made up their mind to barter leaf for leaf, opium for tea. The Chinese empire fully comprehended the addicting effects of opium only when it was too late. That is, when opium addiction had proven a plague, affecting many aspects of society. At that point, the Sino-British relations worsened, and the First Opium War broke out. In the context of this political and economic rivalry between the two major powers of the time, dismantling the Chinese tea monopoly would mean shifting the balance of political and economic power from China to the United Kingdom. So, the East India Company came up with one of the most ingenious and ruthless swindles ever. They hired aforementioned botanist Robert Fortune and tasked him with both smuggling tea plants from China into India, newly colonized by the British, and whose climate was more suitable for tea crops than the British one, and of swindling Chinese manufacturers out of their jealously guarded know-how. Robert Fortune successfully accomplished his mission by traveling in disguise across southern China, which back then was impervious to foreigners and travelers. He managed both to mingle with locals and to earn their trust thanks to his proficiency in Chinese and his cross-cultural savviness. Far from being perceived as a barbarian European or a conman, Fortune used his exquisitely oriental courtesy and good manners for befriending locals, stealing their trade secrets and smuggling them both into India. Only a few among the plants Fortune had introduced in the northwestern provinces of India actually survived. However, the technology and know-how brought over from China would later prove instrumental in the flourishing of the Indian tea industry in Assam and Sri Lanka, which survives to this day.